I'd like to uh, reply to somebody who wrote to me um, and, and maybe share a little bit of the correspondence. And I want to warn you, I was really ticked by this. And so I'm not going to mince words in my reply. Okay. So someone uh, wrote and said, are you still going to forward my questions to Kim? The queries are, could you ask him why she is supporting a subscription-based news channel, example, United News Network, if she's in charge of all the money, why can't she just fund it herself? Isn't she allowed to use that money for good causes? Also, why does she promote health products in some of her interviews? Is she on commission? Surely she does not need to earn extra money from such ventures if she is in charge of all the money. Please also ask her if she is source sponsored or is it a lower ranked entity? Who are they and what is their ultimate aim for us here on the earth? Also, how does she expect us to fight back if we had her powers of being able to kill somebody like Marduk? Then, yeah, we could fight back as it would be a level playing field. If you go on marches, the police charge into us for no reason and beat us with their batons. If we organize petitions and hand them into government, they're just ignored. The evil people have an armed police force protecting them. And we in the UK do not have access to guns, tear gas, extending batons, rubber bullets, et cetera, et cetera. So if we tried to fight them, we would get slaughtered. Or we could end up seriously injured, brain damaged, for example, or locked up in jail. And if the latter occurred, would Kim come to help us? Denying the evildoers access to money is a step in the right direction, but we need some more intervention from source because, as I have said before, this is not a level playing field. If we stood up against the system, we would have some drummed up charges placed on us, labeled by mainstream media as criminals, troublemakers, and locked up. Finally, why is Kim so worried about the five-star generals not being paid by Trump? These people probably have really nice houses, which they could always sell and downsize if they are running out of money. The people on the earth in real trouble are the very poor in the third world and developing country. They need a guaranteed income so that they can have a roof over their heads and food and drink on the table. Kim, Worry about the really poor first, please. Daphne writes back. She says, hi, um, we plan to do a Q&A on Kim. I still see our comment on the post. I guess Tony had complained that uh, his post had been removed or his comments had been removed. Um, and Daphne says, I still see the comments on the post. It's not been removed by YouTube, so don't worry about that. So then he writes back and he says, I think there's a misunderstand. All the comments are not missing. Only my comments are missing because they have shadow banned my account, which means I can see the comments I made under Penny's video. But when I logged on as another user, the comments do not appear. Thus, I wanted to check whether Daphne had kept a record of the questions that I wish to be put forward to Penny when she interviews Kim next time. So then Daphne writes back and she says, just to be clear, Penny will answer your questions as they are very common questions that we've had repeatedly. They are good questions which could be easily addressed. They will not be related to Kim and Penny's talks. In other words, I'm not going to bring those up to Kim. And then she closes by saying, does that work for you? So then he replies, hi, I was hoping more for answers from Kim Gogwin. A third party answering on her behalf is not the same. I assume you will not be asking the questions I mentioned when Penny interviews Kim next. 
I suppose Penny answering the questions on Kim's behalf is better than nothing, but they really need to be answered by Kim. I am disappointed, so no, it doesn't work for me. And then he says, he goes on uh, to say, Daphne, asking, does that work for you is very rude. Are you really part of a spiritual organization? You don't seem very spiritual to me. And that is what ticked me off. Okay, so here is my response. This is Penny. Your response to Daphne was rude and insulting, and I think you owe her an apology. I can see why you've been shadow banned if that's the way you treat people. I am not going to ask him your questions because they reveal a serious level of immature misunderstanding around money and power. You seem to think that just because someone has money or power, they can do whatever they want. Is that how you would behave? Have you forgotten what ethics are? What honor is? Have you forgotten what it is to hold principles of goodness and truth? Are you so jaded and so cynical that you can no longer grasp what is possible when people stand up for what is right? The people of Earth have all been witnesses to the misbehavior of governments and politicians who promise the world. And then when elected or in power, they do whatever they want. We have all been victims of their lying, cheating, embezzling, injustices, and many nefarious behaviors. It's our power that they're using, our money that they're spending, but none of them have cared what we thought or what we wanted at all. We have not seen ethics, honor, truth, or good principles demonstrated for many decades, but we must not believe that such things no longer exist. The subscription news channel you talk about was not Kim's idea. It was created by someone else who needs to be able to pay for people, equipment, bandwidth, you know, <laughs> ordinary things of business. Kim encourages and is supportive because it is focused on telling the truth and presenting the people of Earth as mostly good. As for the supplements, this is a matter of common sense. Why do you suppose anyone would be supportive of health products? Might it be that she and anyone else who's paying attention can recognize the severe degeneration happening among our people? I doubt that she gets a commission, but even if she did, so what? We cannot have a peaceful world when people are irritable, fatigued, suffering from high levels of inflammation, foggy perception, disease, and an inability to generate the energy needed for healing. All of these conditions are the result of poor health caused by lack of sufficient nutrition, all of which leads to chronic impatience, rage, and eventually war. What makes you think Kim should be handing out money? Are you a socialist? Handouts that make people believe that someone's out there who will take care of them do us a huge disservice because it leads people to believe that they do not need to take responsibility for themselves. This causes arrested development and the evolution of consciousness slows drastically, also eroding our natural inner authority. Kim does have her hand firmly on the controls of the financial system, but beyond that, she cannot do anything more without cooperation from the people, the banks, the businesses, the corporations, etc. She has offered to work with the existing banks, but they have to sign a contract to loan money only for projects that restore the planet make the world a better place, nurture humanity, 
bring forth new and less damaging inventions and similar goals. So far, the banks have refused to work with her. The situation is a standoff. The bottom line for everyone is that we all need one another. Kim is doing her part. Are you doing yours? Your question asking if Kim is source sponsored made me laugh out loud. Really? Is this how you think? We are all made of source. Kim is where she is because she happened to be pursuing ways to make the world a better place. She saw an opportunity to make a difference and she took it. Only discovering later that she had bitten off quite a chunk to chew. She was not chosen as so many people seem to think. She was not placed in the position she's in by any lower entities. And since most people cannot wrap their minds around the fact that she is working with off-planet equipment and people, it's best to leave the subject of Marduk alone until people are more ready to deal with OPs. In other words, OPs are other people or off-planet people. You complained. If you go on marches, the police charge into us for no reason and beat us with their batons. If we organize petitions and head them into government, they are just ignored. If we try to fight them, we get slaughtered. So let me ask you, why would anyone with no guns, no batons, no bullets, no tear gas, go off to fight such weapons? Duh. Is that the only way you can think of to fight? If that's the best you can do, well, you're right. You'll just get slaughtered. It's actually the stupidity that gets slaughtered. Unfortunately, the human is collateral damage in that fight. I am hearing quite a few people say, it's time to get our guns and stand up. And my response is, no, it's time to sit down and shut up. Not a peep. Not a single person going to the grocery store, the drugstore, the deli, the gas station, the movies, the pub, the restaurant, the bank, or even to the job. No phone calls, no internet activity, no money spent or received, no transactions of any kind. The cabal has no power unless we give it to them. By engaging in all of these activities day after day, we are giving them our power. Power is consciousness in motion. Everything consciousness focuses on expands and grows. Pull your attention away and focus away from everything that the cabal has set up to entrap you. No one's going to die if we don't go anywhere, if we don't eat, don't drink or shop or travel or do anything except sit still for a few days. No one's going to die except the cabal, that is. In a week, it would all be over. Every single thing we do from day to day has been set up by the cabal. It's their framework. And I think it's time we all dropped out. Perhaps we should all have a sit down on November 1st and just get the bloody job over with. Better yet, how about 11-11? Isn't that one of their special power days? What if we just turned the table on them? You ask why Kim is so worried about the five-star generals not being paid by Trump and you suggest they sell their houses and downsize if they're running out of money. How ridiculous. I tend to think that Kim is not as worried about the five-star general paychecks as much as she is worried about the havoc and the confusion that would be caused if they turned on him and took him out. A lot of people are hanging their hopes on Trump. 
What happens if he's gone? There would be complete chaos. Yes, the generals should be paid, partly to avoid the possible consequences of taking out Trump and also because it is right to do so. If Trump goes back on his word to the generals, can we trust him to keep his word to us or the rest of the world? Finally, you suggest that Kim should focus on the very poor in the third world and developing countries. So let me share a little bit of my own experience and viewpoint. I grew up in a family that was very large. We were mostly farmers and a few factory hands, truck drivers and laborers. My own family was not wealthy. We didn't always have enough food. We definitely didn't have shoes or clothes that fit, but we had a roof over our heads, some heat in the winter, and we worked hard to make, fix, and grow what we needed. What we did have was an abundance of love, laughter, a willingness to entertain ourselves, and pride in our self-sufficiency. Many of those people you refer to as the very poor are not in as much trouble as the people of the Western world who think they need big houses, big cars, technology, fast foods, hovering parents, six different kinds of insurance, air conditioning, the latest fashions, a 401k, and fat bank accounts. If you think about it, how did people used to live before all these signs of development came along? How did we organize life before corporations took over? How did we heal ourselves? What did we eat? And what was the purpose of life before big government began encroaching on our rights, usurping our decisions, and corralling our freedoms? When the cabal goes down, life may become a bit chaotic for a while. But those people in third world countries will probably do much better than those in the first world countries who have forgotten how to survive without a government spoon in their mouths and up their rear. I completely disagree that Kim's first worry should be about the poor in developing countries. I think it should be right where it is, focused on holding the line, trying to get us to step back into managing our lives on behalf of ourselves, creating the structures and systems that work best for us, and getting us to recognize that we have a window of opportunity here. It's ours for the taking if we can just wake up enough to see the possibilities. If the poor go down, it's a tragedy. If we go down in Western civilizations, it's over for us and the poor. China steps in to pursue their wet dream of owning and controlling the entire planet. And if that happens, the whole planet will blow up and we will go back to primitive status, which is the one thing that the robes did not want us to do. Lastly, your accusation that Daphne was rude, followed by your question, are you really part of a spiritual organization? You don't seem very spiritual to me, is incredibly thoughtless, rude, and insulting. People like you are the reason the world is like it is right now. So just for your information, this is not a spiritual organization. We are just a small group of people with an intense spirit of commitment to a better world and expanded consciousness. We are working to teach people about true spirituality so you can learn to nurture one another as human beings and still evolve into the joy of wisdom, grace, and power. Your comments are not nurturing. And you obviously have the idea that spirituality is something you put on in order to show off how pure and holier than thou you are. This is the same kind of hollow crap the politicians and bankers do. 
So don't expect that from me. I'm not in a popularity contest and I'm not competing for any spiritual seeker of the year award. The reasons I bothered to answer you at all are two. One was to stand up for Daphne who has worked her ass off for two years and doesn't deserve petty baseless comments like that. If you can't be kind then don't come around. The other reason is because I think it's important to be honest and real. And although your rudeness pissed me off, your questions were excellent. They were excellent examples of the degeneration in our thinking, and they demonstrate perfectly the kind of thinking we need to get beyond. So I'll close by saying thank you for writing. And I would suggest that it's time to grow up and show up in your own life. Thank you.